E. Otis Harris has been missing for almost five months. He's a 32 year old gay black man from Fort Worth, Texas, but his story isn't one that you've heard about. In fact, DBL is the very first to cover it. And all this month, we are dedicating our true crime chronicles to missing people of color. And today we are sharing his story. He was the best son ever. Everybody loved Trey. Eotis, known as Trey, is a special education teacher from Fort Worth, Texas. He disappeared in the middle of the night five months ago. He called me again like at three something that morning and he was out walking his dog. I was like, why are you out walking your dog at three something in the morning? The last conversation Corlita had with her son was June 15th, 2021. He just told me to go to bed and I said, I love you. And he said he loved me too. And that was it. I had a missed call at four. I called him that morning when I got up at 745 to go to work. It was no answer. It went straight to voicemail. And I kept calling all day that day. Something came over me that night when I didn't hear from him. And I was like, he got to be okay. You know, a mother's fear knows something. The next day, Trey's truck was found at 9 a.m. in Aspermont, Texas three hours from Fort Worth. And it was still running. Uh, keys and wallet was still left in the vehicle. There were some workers that were working on the bridge that's there, said they seen a, a, a black male get out the truck, running after some dogs. And the witnesses that seen the young man that got out the truck said that that was not my son. So who was that man? And where is Trey? He would never call me and we talk like this and, and just leave. And then you leave everything, your whole apartment, a 2020 GMC truck, money in the bank, your dogs. Somebody knows something, and that's why I wanted to get it out. Trey just would not leave like this. He just wouldn't. I love you, son. Please come home. Call me. Oh, that is heartbreaking. Trey's mom refuses to give up on finding her son. Earlier, we spoke with her to get the latest on his case. Please welcome Corlita Johnson, Trey's mother, who continues her fight to find her son. First off, thank you so much, Ms. Johnson, for being here and for sharing your story. We can't even begin to imagine your pain. You spoke with Trey right before he disappeared. Was he acting odd in any way to you? Did he share anything with you or did you get a mom's intuition about anything? No, he was perfectly, you know, normal. I mean, as my kid, you know, he was, excited and he was just you know he was a little upset early in the daytime but you know we talked and everything but not to an instant that i wouldn't talk to him again mm -hmm. wow. so after trey's truck was found explain how local law enforcement in fort worth and aspermont failed to conduct a proper investigation i felt something weird in my stomach mm -hmm. like something was wrong and they told me they found his truck um after that they advised us to come and get the truck so there was no kind of you know, DNA or nothing taken. They let us absolutely come get the truck. So I, you know, talked to the sheriff and everything there and um, came home and I filed a police report for Fort Worth on that Saturday. But because he was already in the system as missing, they said that they couldn't take my report. I was thinking he's been here a resident for 32 years. You know, that would be normal for a Fort Worth Police Department to take up the case. But because his truck was found in Aspermont, Texas, uh, it was up to their sheriff department to take everything. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I, I, wow. That's just. I, there's so. I'm going to be professional and just ask my next question, but I'm, I'm in shock. But, I, you know, there's a number of things uh, that you find just don't add up about Trey's disappearance. Like there was a suitcase that was found. Like, w w can you walk us through that? OK, so uh, also um, his phone was pinged last in Quanta, Texas. It's like, it, and then his suitcase was found on the side of the freeway in Paducah, Texas. Whoa. And then the truck was found in Aspermont. So it's to me, it's like a scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. You're making us try to find these things. And the guy that picked up the uh, suitcase thought it was a toolbox. Mm. Just huh. passing by. I mean, he said it was not like it was thrown. It's like it was placed there. There was no scratches, no nothing on the suitcase. All right, this, 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 this is uh, amazing because you're now taking matters into your own hands, which I think all mothers watching are like, yep, yep, yep. And there are now new developments. What can you share and bravo for taking the initiative? 
The only thing I know now is that um, his Facebook at password was changed um, and it came out of Corpus Christi, Whoa. Texas. It, and that was on August the 2nd. I I mean, I, we've been doing so much investigation that it's like, I, it's crazy. But um, I gave them, the, it gave us the IP address. It gave us the name of the computer and that it was out of uh, Corpus Christi, Texas. But nobody has done anything about that as well. We got to get you on amateur sleuths or something. How have organizations like Black and Missing helped you raise awareness and given you support through this heartbreaking ordeal? This is the first news conference I've done. I have done nothing in my own city. Mm. They turned me down. Wow. Nobody has done anything. Um, so Black and Missing has been wonderful because without them, I wouldn't be talking to you guys today. Wow. If you have any information about Trey's disappearance, of course, please contact authorities and for information and updates on Trey's case and other missing loved ones, go to blackandmissinginc.com. Ms. Johnson, we are with you and we hope we are helping the fight. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for reaching out to me.